Hi, it's Thomas Cook from Toronto's real estate team at REMAX, and here's our October 2013 Toronto Real Estate Market Report. October sales were very strong when compared to last year's results. I'll comment more on that in this broadcast as we go through the market report. So, let's review some of the Toronto Real Estate Board statistics and see what this is all about. It was a big month, with October MLS sales totaling 8,000 houses and condominiums in all the districts. This sales number was 18% above the average for the month over the last 12 years, and up a significant 16% from one year ago. Remember that last summer we had the federal government reduce the amortization period down for, to 25 years from 30, which at that time eliminated a lot of first-time buyers from the marketplace. Condo townhouses and high-rise suites increased their share of the market slightly to 32% with 2,550 units changing hands. The October average sale price for all GTA homes came in at 539000 up 7% from 2012, and we'll comment more on that later. East of Young and south of Bloor in the CO8 downtown Treb district, the condo sales price average was 408700 while west of Young and CO1, the average was 437800 more condo market details will be coming in just a few minutes. The active listing inventory is one of the strongest indicators of how smooth or outrageous the market's going to be. We had a 6% decline in inventory for the month of October compared to historical numbers, and lower by 10.5% from last year at this time. The sales to listings or percent chance of selling ratio is how we determine what type of market we're actually in. 24 to 28 percent is a neutral market, below 24 percent is a buyer's market, and above 28 percent is a seller's market. In October, that ratio finished for the overall market at 43 percent, up 10 percent from last year's market dip, but higher than the average historically for the month. We're now in busy seller market territory. The press has reported that one of the significant reasons for recent higher sales was the mortgage rate increases we've seen in July and August, which motivated buyers who had expiry dates on their mortgage rate guarantees. That influence is now over and shouldn't be a factor in the upcoming months until, until or unless rates start increasing once again. With the dismal economic situation in the U.S. and Europe, rates aren't expected to go anywhere soon. While the overall days on market TREB average dropped by one day to 26, the numbers for downtown condos were 25 days east and 34 days west of Young. Detached Toronto homes sold in a faster 20 days on average, and more affordable semis were moving in 15 days. Both of these days on market times were about the same as in September. As you can see from the graph, the October average home price was again up from one year ago. This continues the trend that we've seen for the past 22 months in Toronto and the GTA. The average sale price year-to-date is up by a significant, but not outrageous, 7.1%, compared to the same period in 2012. We should expect that the average resale price will stay relatively stable for November, and then start declining slightly through the slower months of December and January. Downtown condo average sale prices in October were up by 6.2% in CO1 and down by 4.7% in CO8 compared to 2012. However, there's always some volatility in these numbers when comparing them month by month. Condo sales numbers were up 22% in CO1 and 10% in CO8 compared to October last year, and the rental market for downtown condos is equally busy. We also saw that the ratio of sales to listings in CO1 increased to 27%, the highest we've seen it since April, while CO8 east of Young increased by 10% to 39.6%. That's on the cusp of being a busy seller's market. The fact that condo sales are up compared to last year and the listing inventory is down are all good signs that the condo market is running smoothly. Almost perfectly, some might say with few multiple offers, lots of choice for buyers, and modest year-over-year -year price increases. This month's special market commentary is about Toronto's thriving condo rental market. Although it might be hard to generate big net cash flows for an investor, the vacancy rate is extremely low, 
and rentals move quickly on the MLS without many vacant days. Looking at the chart, you'll see that condo rentals in the third quarter of 2013 were up 25% from one year ago. And we have the experience to attest to there often being multiple offers on rentals. Average rents are up just under 2% for one-bedroom suites and up 3.6% for two-bedroom condo units. This is an excellent statistic because it will tend to keep investor units off the resale market for at least a couple of years and prevent a massive increase in the condo for sale inventory levels. So, what's the best way to make the first baby step into Toronto's real estate market? The best first step is to go on a market experience tour of condo or house neighborhoods with one of our team members. What a tour is not intended to do is show you homes with the intention that you'd buy one. What it is intended to do is to give you a chance to get a clearer idea of what's available on the market in your favorite parts of the city and in your price range without being worried about having to make a buying decision. Once you've had your tour, we want you to go back home, think about what you saw, and then you're better able to set up a good home buying plan and make smart decisions about where you and when you want to be in your new home. You can sign up for your condo tour at dailydowntowncondotours.com. That's dailydowntowncondotours.com and a tour of houses at dailytorontohometours.com. That's dailytorontohometours.com. So, all the best and check back here in early December for our November Toronto Real Estate Market Report.